Some of y'all thought uh, what I did Friday night was, was pretty rough, and it, and it was really, honestly, I felt bad. When I got home, I felt bad. I thought, Lord, why do I have to drag them people through a mess like that? But you don't know the, peop- the kids that were here that uh, were doing everything I preached about. Somebody found this letter here this morning. This is from one young person to another young person. I won't read the names. This girl said, what's so special about me? I'm not special. Everything's worth a lot. When it comes down to it, no one wants me. People say they do want me as their GFBF, girlfriend, uh, best friend. But seriously, everyone just says that. Give me a harder time. I'm going to skip down here. It says, I don't, People don't even know I exist. Why don't people care about me? This was left in here this, last night. You know that. I only talk to uh, people at lunch. Moves on a little bit and said, all I do is mess everything up. Have a nice life. I mess everything up. Maybe you might forget Ties, do you have you and me? Man, this thing is, we need to talk. Does anyone else accept something? The name I can't read all of it. That was a, probably a teenage girl in here last night. It's hard for us to imagine that. You know, after you get older, why? People would feel like it, but that's how they feel. The devil convinces them that nobody don't care about them. And then he's got his foot in the door, and that, that's where the suicide, uh, the drugs, and all that stuff, all that stuff comes from. But quickly this morning, take your Bible, turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And uh, I want to I wanna look at something this morning right quick. Uh, very, very, very quickly. I'm not going to preach long at all. You pray for my voice. Um, Ecclesiastes 12 said this I announced last night that I'd be preaching on three things now get a young person out of the will of God and neither one of them is a sin sometimes we make the mistake of thinking well the devil he'll tempt you with these all terrible things and I'm not tempted with them so I'm all right." but it don't always work that way Ecclesiastes 12 will be our starting verse Verse 1, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. That means remember God while you're young. Hold your finger there. Remember God while you're young. Why? Because the evil days are going to come when you say, I have no pleasure in them. There's going to come days that you have no pleasure in. You're going to sit and your arms are going to ache. Your elbows are going to hurt. Your knees won't bend. Your neck will hurt. You won't be able to walk. You won't be able to see good. You won't be able to hear good. According to the Bible, there's coming days when you're going to say, I have no pleasure in them. There's tens of thousands of people sitting right here in North Carolina this morning who does not have any pleasure at all today. They're being fed through a tube they're in artificial food going in their body and they have no pleasure. So while you're young and feel good, you better remember God. Amen. Now, uh, you, youth can be and should be uh, one of the most exciting, enjoyable times of your life. You're growing up, you're learning everything, you're strong, you're healthy, you're athletic, you're uh, uh, full of life. You get your driver's license, you go to school. All that stuff can be, should be a great time. But according to the Bible, while you're doing all that, you better remember your creator and where it came from. Now, I want to say three things this morning quickly. And there's a lot of young people sitting here this morning. You've got your mind made up. You're going to live for God. And when I say young, I'm talking about 30 and younger. Uh, uh, I've ra- I keep raising that a few year, every, every few years. I remember when I thought 30 was old. Uh, now I think 40 is young. Uh, but uh, uh, 
this can apply to anybody in here. I've seen it work on every age. Three things that'll knock you out of church and out of the will of God, and neither one of them is a sin. Now, you better listen to me. Number one, especially for the teenagers, getting a job. Getting a job. I can't tell you the good kids that I've known over the last 40 years that was on fire for God, lived for the Lord, got fired up at youth camp, got fired up at youth rally, and they just love the Lord. They come every service. They open their Bible, and you can see them. They're doing like this the whole time. And they look at their friend in life, and they look back at me, and, look, and they look at their friend in life. I mean, just eating it up. Yeah. And one day, they come up to me. I couldn't tell you how many times this happened. They come up to me and say, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, guess what? I got a job. And I go, oh, no. And they, every time they say, you're not happy? And I said, no, I'm not happy. And they say, why? I said, you know good and well why I'm not happy. And they said, well, you fussed at everybody and told everybody should work. And, oh, these lazy young people. I said, that's true. Every young person ought to work. But every young person don't need a job yeah. yet. Yeah, and so she says, I said, where is it? She said, it's a McDonald's. I don't have to serve alcohol. I don't have to, uh, we're gonna, it's a McDonald's. And I said, that's awful. And she says, why? I said, because they're going to make you work. No, 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 no. I know what you're thinking. I know how you think. You think it's going to make me work. I've already talked to my manager. Every one of them says this. I've talked to the manager, and he told me that I only have to work two Sunday mornings a month, and then I can be here on Sunday night and Wednesday night, and I'll be, you don't have to worry, only two Sunday mornings a month. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning, and you better listen to me. It never does work like that. Never does, never does, never does. The first Sunday, they've got her training. The next Sunday they've got her training because that's when the other people don't want to work. The next Sunday is her scheduled Sunday to work. That's three. And the next Sunday, all the other girls went out and got drunk last night and called and said, so they called her and said, we got some people out. Can you come in? And the Christian girl has missed four Sundays in a row. If I could scream it in your head, louder I would. Hey, hey, listen to me, kids. You need to be in the house of God every Sunday of your life. You need it, you need it, you need it. You ain't gonna make it missing two or three Sundays a month. You know why? Because on that Sunday of your work, you're so tired that you come home Sunday evening, they don't let you off till six, and you smell like chicken grease, and your hair's all matted together, and you say, I just can't make it to church tonight. That's Sunday morning, Sunday night. I went to the steakhouse one day, years ago, and I was sliding my tray down through there like this, looking at the menu, and a girl, she said, hey, Brother Danny. I said, where have you been? She said, I've been working. You know, like that makes it all right. Like I'm supposed to say, oh, okay. I don't, I don't believe that's all right. Yeah. I don't believe it's all right. I don't think you ought to take a job working on Sunday unless you have to. If you have to to feed your family, look, you can sit there and get mad, disagree, whatever you want to. I'm telling you, you ask God. Ask God what he thinks about it. I, I know we have, we have policemen, we have nurses, we have people who have to. I understand that. I do understand that. Uh, and, and I understand. I'm glad policemen are out there working this morning, ain't you? I am. I'm glad. And, and if you got to, you got to. I get it. I get it. But if you don't got to, and especially while you're young, you better be in church on Sunday. I said, where you been? She says, I have to work. And I said, well, why do you have to work on Sunday? She said, well, I got school, and I go to school in the evening. And I, go, I said, okay, I get it. You have school, church, and work. 
It's obvious you can't do all three. So one of them's got to go, right? And she looked down and said, don't start on me. How many would be honest and you felt that way about me before? Don't start on me. <laughs> sure yeah, I can't help it. I can't help it. I love you and I want to help you. I'm not trying to be mean. I ain't trying to dictate your life. I, it's like God's, I can't help but try to help you. I know I make people mad when I say that, but if something's got to go. School, work, church, and guess what it is? It's church. Listen, hey, old people, help me here for a minute. Ain't they going to get to work all they want to real soon? Real soon. Look, y'all are going to get to work all you You're going to want to get to work all you want to work in a few years. Mooch off your mom and daddy a few more years. Amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, look, if it comes to the point where, I, you know what this girl said? I said, why do you even have to work? She said, to pay for my car. I said, why you got to have a car? She said, so I can get to work. Boy, you're a brilliant, blonde genius. You are a genius, man. Hey, you don't have to have a car. Finagle around. Finagle's a Greek word. That means work it around so that you can save up enough money and buy you one for about eight, eight seven, eight hundred dollars and you don't have to work, pay for a stupid car that'll get you out of the will of God. Now, I said neither one of them is a sin. It ain't a sin to get a job. Actually, it is a sin not to work. But it, the devil will use the job to get you out. Let me tell you, people, we got people that are not here this morning. I don't know if anybody in here is guilty of that. Don't get mad at me. I know people who grandma got sick and they stayed out of church to help grandma for a few Sundays and grandma died and they never did get back in there. Never did get back. You got to fight. You can't say, my mama's sick, so I go visit her on Sunday. That don't work. You visit her on Sunday afternoon. You visit her on Saturday. You need to be in the house of God. And let me tell you something else. Your kids need to be in the house of God. Amen. Getting a job. Number two, second thing will get you out of the will of God, and it ain't a sin is joining something, a club, organization, anything like that, sports. Um, it, it, parents come in all the time. I, I've had people tell me, you know what, preacher? I took my kid to every ball game in the world when they was growing up, listen, and now he's 17 or 18, and I can't get him to go to church. He don't have no interest in it. If I had it to do over, I'd change my priorities and I'd do things a little bit different. Now look, this is easy to preach in another church and hard to preach in your own church because I know everybody in here and you know me. And I love you. God bless you. Y'all know I am not against sports in the right place. I play sports myself. We have a ball game tomorrow night, don't we, coach? I'm trying to be there. I'm trying to be there and play on the old man's league after the after the church league is over with. Don't lie if you come over there. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, we we do that. I'm not against this. I, I said that because I don't want you to think I'm against. I'm not against your kids playing ball. I'm not against. Uh, it's it helps them in a lot of ways. It helps them learn teamwork. Helps them learn respect for the coach. Helps them learn how to respect other people. Some of that stuff is good. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it, it says ball, 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 ball. And then if you ain't careful, it's going to be drugs. It's going to be alcohol. It's going to be, you think, where did I go wrong? They need every church service they can be in. They need to be here in the house of God. They need to be preached to every chance they got. Let me ask you something. How many of you people here this morning feel like that you've got closer to God and been helped this weekend? Would you raise your hand? All right, that's all of us, I'm sure. I have. God answered my prayers directly yesterday. Directly stuff I prayed about. I feel like that we've got a blessing that the people that wasn't here ain't gonna get. And I'm not fussing. I'm not fussing at you if you have to work on Sunday. 
I'm not fussing at you if you play sports. Please. Brother Danny said you didn't hurt my feelings. I didn't mean it like that. I said it's not wrong. But the devil will use something that ain't wrong to get you. It ain't wrong to go sit with grandma when she's dying. But you ain't helping her none. And you got Sunday evening or Saturday evening to go see grandma. I'm telling you, 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 should, you should feel like I got to be. I know how wicked I am. I need to be in the house of God. Amen. Almost three-fourths of young people that go to college lose their faith in the Bible and God. The first year of college. Phone call. Young lady, a letter actually, went to UNC Chapel Hill, which ain't fit for a dog to go to. Don't get mad at me, brother. That's a beer drinking capital of North Carolina. Amen. Some of y'all worship sports, you worship college. I, I don't, brother. I don't have any respect for education that's against this book right here. They like it, lump it, bump it, jump it, choke on it, whatever you want to do. I'm telling you, if it's against God, it ain't a million miles of being right. Ain't a million miles of being right. I can't stand people, be around people who worship college. Been graduated 15 years. Oh, I wish you'd be that dedicated to your church. Be a bumper sticker about Jesus, how about it? Ain't he important? Some of y'all going to get mad. I love you. I ain't trying to be mean. This girl wrote her daddy and said, Daddy, I know you're going to be disappointed in me, but I no longer believe in God. No longer believe in God. I appreciate people in our church who have tried. Uh, Jeremy, where you at? Oh, he's trying to get the water on. One of our deacons. Uh, Brother Jeremy drives a truck. Oh, there he is. So little I didn't see you. And he, he drives a truck. And sometimes he's gone. Didn't we? And it never fails. I'll get a text from him. Well, he's somewhere up north in the snow blizzard or something like that. And he'll say, watching the service online. See, when you're on vacation, or even if you do have to work some, get you some preaching. If you, if you have a job where you have to travel, I mean, I mean, they're gone. They're gone with Dax a lot of time like that, and and I'm not happy they're gone like that. But Carrie always told me. She said, "Daddy, we watch every service. We're right there in it, singing everything. If you got to be gone, that's what you do. Amen. And you make sure your kids know. I know kids grow up and think, oh, we're on vacation. It's we don't go to church when we're on vacation. That's because you got a mom and dad that don't have much of a brain." I don't care, brother, where you're at. There ain't no good churches around here. You can find something somewhere. Anything better than laying in bed. Joining something. I'm not saying it's wrong for your kids to play sports, do whatever. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying you better watch it because the devil will use that to get the whole family out of God's will. Number three, this is last. You know what it is. Everybody in here knows what it is. What's the worst thing that can happen to a teenager on fire for God? Somebody tell me. Hey, you got it. Falling in love. There's been more good kids went down the tube. Is it a sin to fall in love? Is it stupid? <laughs> I just got, I'm just messing with you. Amen. Hey. Years ago, a young lady come to church. She's about, I think she's 17. Marion, you don't know her. This has been a long time ago. Her and her friend got saved. And I'm telling you, the look on them girls' face was just like these girls. They just looked up at the sky. You can just see it. Can't you just see it on somebody when they're pure? You know, it's, there's a certain glow a person's got when they're right with God. You just, you just see it on them. Usually... If you look wicked, you are wicked, usually. Not always. You, the count, your face uh, tells a lot of times what kind of life you're living. And these girls got on fire for God, and they come and they sit on the second row. We always up in Marion, always let the, all the girls sit on the front of the second row. 
All the young preachers sat on the front row. And we had about 20 young preachers sitting on the front row, about 20 single girls on the second row trying to pick out which one of them young preachers they wanted to fall in love with. Them. That's truth. That's truth. Because I always told them, I said, girls, get you a good church man. I quit saying that after a few years. You can't guarantee them guys. Your odds are a little better, but you can't guarantee them church boys. And... Uh, Girls come and they, they looked at me and just like I was talking about a while ago, everything I said is just eating it up, eating it up. And I noticed I didn't see her one Sunday. I can't remember this girl's name. She was a cheerleader at high school up there. And I didn't see her. And then here she come. About two Sunday mornings later and she had something holding on her arm. I don't know what it was. It looked about like that microphone stand right there. Had to tease the hair on his legs, make his, feet, his hair, uh, socks stand up. But he's a football player. All oh, them girls want to date them football players. Man, that's a man right there. I heard some of them painting their toenails and stuff. God, he, listen, if a boy paints his toenails or fingernails, if he wears more jewelry than you do, you better get rid of him or her, shim, whatever it is. So she said, she had something hanging on her arm and she didn't come up and sit on the second row. She sat way back in the back. I said, something ain't right. And then they sat back there the whole time like this. She didn't look at me like, amen, Brother Danny, amen. It was like, I mean, good Lord make you throw up. Desperate. Crazy over feeling like she's in love. Falling in love with love. She don't even know that retarded nut. I mean, listen, she don't even know that guy. But she's in love. You want me to tell you what she's in love with? Somebody who thinks she's the only one. That's what girls fall in love with. He thinks I'm the only one. I love him. So, wasn't long. She wasn't worth a dime after that. She wasn't worth a dime. Really, honest to goodness. She lost every bit of spiritual contribution. She was, the glow left, and I thought, what in the world has happened to her? I seen this with boys up there. Every time they'd get a girlfriend, they wouldn't be worth a dime. They want to sit way back, and I like this the whole time, like this the whole time, and talk, look at me, and talk, look at me, and talk, look at me, and talk, look at me. Listen, when you can't keep your hands off each other in church, that lets everybody know you're, you're really going to mess up when you get out of here. That ain't love. That is not love. Tell them, everybody, that is not love. That is lust. That's lust. Now, when you can love and lust at the same time, and you can be in somebody, you can lust after somebody you ain't married to, and you can love somebody you don't lust after. How messed up is that? But that ain't love. Love ain't really always a feeling. You can lust after total strangers. I don't mean you're in love. She said, one Sunday, one day, her sister called me. She said, Brother Danny, pray for her. I named this girl. I said, what's wrong? She said, pray for her. She said, she's pregnant. I think she's 15 or 16. And she said, Mama's gone to take her to Asheville today to have that abortion. She said, see, they just told her at school that she was sick. She's going to miss the desk so they wouldn't, nobody would know it. They thought they'd go ahead and get it over with. And I'm not trying to make nobody feel bad who's had that happen. Look, we've all messed up. We've all had problems. I've done stuff I ought to be in hell for since I've been saved. So I ain't trying to put no guilt on nobody. If you've done that and God's forgive you, don't worry about it. You're no worse than anybody else. You're just as good as anybody else in you. Don't you ever feel like it. Or any other sin for that matter. That girl never did get straightened out. Oh, by the way, they never did get married. And her life was going like this, and it went vroom. And as I stand here before you this morning, I don't know what ever happened to her. But she got out by doing something that ain't even wrong, falling in love. You get, listen, Falling in love with somebody will mess you up. 
you ain't got no sense. You just get all giddy. and I, I, I don't know what it feels like to be high on drugs, but that must be what it feels like or something like that. You, I mean, you can't, you're like you're floating. One man told me the other day, he said, I don't know if I've ever been in love. Man, you need to go to the doctor or something. Uh, something's wrong with you. He's 50 years old and had been married. A truth. He said, I, she knows who I'm talking about. He said, I don't know if I've ever been in love. <laughs> but the devil used that on him. I'll never forget one, one night, me and somebody driving up town. It snowed. And I had a little Toyota truck. And every time it snows, I always, still to this day, want to get out in it and drive. I just want, I just like to do that. I like to play in the snow, but I really like to drive in it. I know people say, I ain't going nowhere. Man, I, when I want to get out there and feel, feel it slip a little bit. As a kid, there's something inside me never did grow up. I'm about 14 still in me, and I never got past that. I have stunted uh, mentality. That's why y'all people like me. You're about on my level too. 14. But you know what? We went up to Marion, and I was going to, I had to go check the church parking lot. I'm the pastor. I wound up cutting donuts up there and, and <laughs> just sliding around and around. And it was sleet, ice, and snow about that deep. And it was about 20, 20 degrees, 19 degrees. And we pulled back out on the street. And I, looked, I said, is that somebody walking? It was 11 o'clock at night. They said, yeah, that's a, that's a girl wrapped up in, and it was pouring rain and sleet and snow, and that makes it even worse. Regular snow ain't as cold as sleet and rain and snow. And I pulled over, it was rough like this, and the person with me rolled down the window. And I said, ma'am, are you all right? And there was a girl there about 18, wrapped up with a blanket, and she had on a t-shirt, barefooted, no shoes, nothing but a t-shirt or underwear, wrapped up in a blanket, and was shivering like this, walking up that street. Her bare feet, and I don't see how she stood it. Honestly, I don't see how she stood that. Right there on East Court Street in Marion. Y'all from Marion know what I'm talking about. Right near Mark's car lot, right up the street there. And I said, ma'am, are you all right? She said, I said, get in here. They scoot over here, turn the heat on high, put her in there. I said, where are you going? She said, me and my boyfriend got in a fight and he kicked me out. And she was from over in Stumptown, right, right up from Greasy Corner, don't laugh. Everybody here knows where Greasy Corner is. It lives in McDowell County. Right up from Greasy Corner, you know, so that's Stumptown. And Stumptown's where a lot of rough people live. And that boy kicked her out. Boy, don't he love her. That's love. Her. He's the same guy that said, oh, baby, I've never felt like this before. Same guy. Same low-down liar that told her how special she was. Kicked her out in the snow. Listen, if a man kick you out in the snow and you barefoot in the wall, he ain't no man. Matter of fact, if he kick you out at all, he ain't no man on a snowy night. He said, and I took her on the other side of Mary and she had kinfolk somewhere and she said, I'll go knock on their door see if they'll let me stay here. And we sat there in the yard and waited and they let her in. I don't know whatever happened to her. I wouldn't know if I seen her today. And I got to thinking about that. There's people here this week that's in the same situation I know of right here in this meeting this week where a guy says, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then treats her like dirt. Look, if he treated his last girlfriend like dirt, he's going to do you that way. If you want to know a man, how a man's going to treat you, look how his daddy treats his mama. And that's how he'll treat you. Unless God does a miracle 
You want to see how a girl will treat you? Look how her mama done her husband, and that's how she'll do you. Unless God does a miracle. There are exceptions, but not many. This is cold, hard truth this morning. If you'll listen to me, it may keep some of you in the will of God. Let's stand. Bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye's closed. Nobody's talking. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. This morning, many of you, this is your last service of the youth rally. This might be a good time. The big crowd's gone. There's people traveling right now on their way to Florida, everywhere else. Right now, on this Sunday morning, might be a good time. Say, hey, the big crowd's out of the way here now. I'm going to go down that altar and do business with God. You come on right now. Come on. Let's come down here and do business with God right now. You want to do that? Come on. Amen. That's right. That's right. Come on, young people. Amen. Lord, I don't want to get out of your will. I don't want to wind up like that girl walking in the snow. I don't want to wind up that girl that her life got off track and she never did get straightened out. I don't want to wind up like that, God. I don't want to wind up like that. God help me. God help me. God help me. God help me. We're just going to pray a minute and go. God help me. God help me. God help me. Amen. Amen. If you made it through that time of life and didn't mess up and ruin you, you ought to thank God here this morning. You ought to shout every day of your life. God's been good to you. Amen. Amen. You can get yourself into a bad marriage. It's easy to get into and hard to get out of, brother. It's a long time. Long time till you die. You can make a big mistake by letting the devil get you out of God's will over something that ain't even a sin. Not even a sin. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. If you bless all these young people here this morning, God give them grace. God, give them strength. God, give them the ability to stand, do the right thing. I pray, Holy Ghost of God, that you might move on this group of young people here this morning. God, send them out of here to do a work for you like never before. And I pray for these girls, Lord, that you'd protect them and build a hedge around them. Don't let them make a wrong decision. These young men, God, help them, Lord God. Please, God, help them, we pray. God, do what ought to be done this morning. We'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name. These still praying this morning. Amen. These still praying. While they're still praying, I'll mention a couple things right quick. Amen.